All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content, and let's get right into the video. But first, what's up, all of my gym stars? What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK of the People's Champ, coming to you live with another video, man. Check it out, man. We got a little bit to talk about, a lot of time to talk about it in. This video definitely gonna make it under 12 minutes, man. Listen, I can taste the tears. I can taste the tears, but first, I need y'all to listen to a little song that I wrote, man. Uh, I wrote it just for y'all. It goes a little something like this. <clears throat> like, like, like the goddamn video. Like, like, it doesn't cost you anything. I said like, like. Like the goddamn video, oh, like, like, it doesn't cost you anything. Ain't nobody asked for your opinion in the background, Bridget. It's always an ad liver. It's a, okay, yeah, it's always an ad liver. Yeah, whatever, man. Like the damn video, man. Y'all be slacking on the likes. I need, can we get 500 likes today, man, on the video or something like that, man? It is what it is, man. But anyway, check it out. Uh, The behind the back is gone and we can taste the salty tears of guards gone by. There's a lot of guards out there that's pissed off right now. Probably mad at me, probably think that everybody mad at Chalk. Everybody thinks that Chalk has something to do with it. Chalk said people been DMing him, saying that, you know, hey, thanks for getting the behind the back chase, bro. Now y'all know that Chalk had, hopefully everybody knows that Chalk had nothing to do with them rolling back to VC, and everybody knows that Chalk had nothing to do with them passing the behind the back, because he was one of the people that people were telling me, well, Chalk is the most plugged in person ever, so, he he couldn't have, you know, um, he the most plugged in person ever. He said they're not changing the uh, behind the back. And I'm like, bro, I'm not going to lie to you. That's It's getting changed. I thought it was just going to get changed and it was just going to change the distance that you, that you can move. I had no idea they were going to pull it pull it completely out of the game and replace it with some BS. Like, it, that that's that was crazy to me. I didn't, I, I never could have imagined that they were going to change it to the degree that they did change it. Now, Guards that have been successful, they still successful. My boy T. Mizzle still hooping out there. We played last night. Uh, we only lost one game because I couldn't hit no shots because they changed. Now, let me tell y'all something. If you're having trouble with your jump shot right now, they have changed the button latency response system. So if you have a high, a high jump shot, a highly rated jump shot, you are cool. If you had a low rated jump shot like me, uh, I, 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 it was like the catches just were different. They were just real different. So what I did was I, I put on um I put on Hall of Fame catch and shoot, and that seemed to fix it for me. So like it made my catches be a lot more consistent because what was happening was when one person would pass me the ball, I get the fast the fast you know take off, and then when somebody else passed me the ball, I would get the slow one that I could you know that I could shoot, but I could never anticipate which one I was going to get. So, what I did was I put on the Hall of Fame catch and shoot, and that seemed to fix the problem for me. Even when I was shooting whites because it gave me the other one, those were still going in. I promise you, after I, I probably shot 50% before I put on Hall of Fame catch and shoot. Once I put on Hall of Fame catch and shoot, I did not miss a shot the rest of the night. And this was a, a shooting center with a 70, a 73 ball. Probably 74 when I'm 99, but you know, it is what it is. So, um, all I'm saying is my shooting ain't that high. And I was able to catch, you know, you, you get cleaner catches when you put on Hall of Fame um, catch and shoot. That's just a little, little tip, a bit, little bit nugget. Anyway, in the wake of all of this, we got your boy Ronnie Two K saying the behind, the, behind the back cheesers are real mad today. But one trick ponies generally, generally, aren't championship, championship material. Don't at me unless you're Richard Sherman, and then you are. Uh, you championship material. He, hey, you gotta be the best. He the best at what he do. He the best one trick pony it is. Some would say it is what it is, man. But like, look, it is what it is. He gonna get that championship this year, and we know, we know that uh, Ronnie is a is a San Fran fan, so we seen him all that, so he get that reference. Anyway, unless you the best one trick pony in the world, which a lot of these guys were, man, I'm telling you, man. And then then we got this guy right here with, with uh, NBA 2K Intel with this video, where dude is like, he's just mad. Oh, he didn't look like he's just mad as hell. Damn. Yes, I like all of that. But anyway, like I was saying, though, um, if you were dribbling and your dribble style consisted of only one move and that was the staple, 
you probably want to get dribbler. You know what the best part about this whole thing is? A lot of people were under the impression that they were getting cooked by other people because of this behind the back. And this is what I've been telling people. If you are good at ISO before they took it out, you, you're going to be good afterwards. And that's, the, that's, that's proven to be the truth. If you depended, relied on that move, and that was the only thing you had, just like people had last year, was just size up, sprint left, then hesitate, sprint back right, and that's all you had, then, I mean, that's what I'm trying, that's what I'm seeing people trying to do this year, and they're not able to really do that. But if you were good at ISO before, and you had a variety of moves in your arsenal, you're just fine. T. Mizzle been just fine. He's been, been able to get to the rim. The hardest thing that he's been, that's been for him is to manufacture a three-pointer. And like, cause like with the behind the back, you could you could uh, come up, hesitate, cross over, behind the back, and then hesitate this side, behind the back, sham guard, and then the person will go that way, and then you can pull it. Um, so you can manufacture threes a lot easier. Is it the same? No, it's not the same, but you can get the same end result. So my thing is, if you were good at dribbling and ISO before, you're gonna be just the same and you'll stand out more. But if you weren't, it's going to, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb. It's gonna be become blatant. And it's just crazy because I've seen a lot of people in the stage, a lot of people in Pro-Am, a lot of people that are supposed to be the top players, they just completely lost and clueless. Are they gonna figure it out? Of course they are. Everybody gonna figure it out. Only thing is people talking about lots gonna be, be like super huge now. But I look at it like regular guards should be super huge now because you don't really, you don't necessarily need a lot to defend people now. See what I'm saying? So that's gonna add more variety to the game and all of that. But at the same time, if you're a lock, you really can't shoot like that unless you're Brother Jones. I mean, he's the only one that got a 42-3 and can shoot the basketball like that. And um, you know, it is what it is. But like I said, a lot of people were under the impression that the only reason that they were losing games was because they're behind the back. If your defense was trash before this, this ain't saving your defense. I've not seen anybody that had trouble defending people before be able to defend anybody afterwards. Like. They, they just getting hit with a series of moves now and they just dead. So, you know, it is what it is, man. Like I said, if you're trash before, you're gonna be trash after this. If you were good before, you're gonna be good after it. I don't see a big deal in the whole thing. Yes, it is an adjustment, but it ain't the end of the world, it ain't the end of the game. And uh, if that's the only move that you had that could get you open and you depended on it like that, then do you really deserve to be counted amongst the elite? I don't know. If they, could, if they take any one move out of the game, and it makes you inert, you weren't very really good to begin with. You just abused an exploit. We all abused it, but I'm just saying, like, you probably abused it to the to the fullest. Anyway, man, on to the next thing. Zion Williamson made his NBA debut last night, and we got the pink diamond moments card from last night. The kid scored 17 points on four of four from three-point shooting in the fourth quarter, and the only thing that stopped him was the medical staff. Once he got rolling, he, he you know, he, he had five points through the first three quarters. Once he got rolling in the fourth, the only thing that stopped him was the medical staff. They said the Alvin Gentry was like, yo, the medical staff was like, can we take him out? We gotta take him out. He didn't he reach his minute restriction or what have you. And uh, Alvin Gentry was like, nah, nah, he gotta stay in this game, bro. That's like, okay, he can stay in until the next time out. Next time out, they had to pull him out. Cause they're looking at the long game. They're like, they're not probably not gonna win too much this year. It's probably not gonna be a whole lot. So, you know, we gotta take him out and uh, preserve him. And you know, cause we're trying to do something to make him a viable, have, make him have a viable career, not just win one game. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like the story when, when Magic threw the little, you know, threw the, uh, the hook, the baby hook, and won the first game. He jumped on Kareem, and Kareem was like, hold on, young fella, we got 81 more of these games left. Same thing like this. You don't want to mortgage your future for one game, so a one game that really wasn't even that important and all of that, even though all the games are important because they, I think they're in like ninth place right now, seventh place or something like that, but the whole point of it is this. He said, leave me in, coach, I can win the game. He's like, bro, this is about your future, man. You know, you sometimes you got to say, as players, you got to save us from ourselves, so they took him out, but anyway, Four for four from three, very impressive. He said he got that Derry Fisher syndrome, man, where Derry Fisher had to sit out the whole 2000, the 99, 2000 season, 2000, uh, 2001 season, yeah, 2000, 2001 season when they won. Uh, no, 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 99, 2000 when they beat Indiana. And uh, they were like, you know, they were like, um, Fish, where you get that jump shot from? He said, you know, Fish had the high ankle sprain at the beginning of the year. He's like, I couldn't move the whole year. So all I could do was shoot the ball. And the same thing with, with Zion. Zion was like, I couldn't move. So. I, I just 
you know, shot the ball. And, and, and obviously, he's become a better shooter. I don't know if that's going to be something that's going to be a staple in his game. But a lot of times when players, like they used to say stuff like that about uh, Amari Stoudemire. He's one injury away from being one of the greatest to ever do it. Because a lot of times when your athleticism is taken away from you, you are forced to learn how to play the game on a, funda a more fundamental level. And then your fundamentals get better. Your jump shots get better. And then when you come back and your athleticism returns, boom, you just... You, you're amazing. And so if he if he keeps taking care of his body, doing what he's supposed to do, he gonna be all right, man. Up next, uh, y'all let me know down in the comments what y'all think about Zion. Did you see his debut? What did you think about it? Did you think it was awesome that he's hitting threes now? Do you think it's something that he gonna be able to sustain or is it just something that just happened uh, just for this game? Up next, man, the, P the Paul Georges, man. Hey, man, I'm mad right now, man. D-Man was like, he got the Paul Georges. Where is this billboard that I can take a picture of? Can somebody find the billboard in the in the neighborhood and send me a screenshot of it so I can just take the picture with my sneakers out and all this? Because D-Man said he got them. But look, though, this is what I don't like. He said he got them from Kicks, right? He, from the little promotion. You can buy them here, right? 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 I can't buy them because I wear a 15. They don't even have a damn 15 listed. What is this? Lift foot motherfuckers, all of y'all. I'm tired of y'all. Tell me, I ain't. He probably wear a ten and a half. Pissed off, my big foot ass. Anyway, up next, man. If you are having problems with uh doing your thing, man, Steezo got a video for y'all, man. He say, hey, the best dribbles out to the patch, man. Hey, Steezo a fool, man. He said they copyrighted him on the video, so he was doing that. Dun, 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 dun. I bet you wonder where I've been. But anyway, he's showing the before. And the after moves, man, and, and you know how he's uh, doing people dirty afterwards. He uh, ended up uh, playing against a... Um... Y'all already know that Steezo always has had the, the, the glitchiest dribble moves, but he went against a lockdown, the first one, and uh, the Zion Williams looking like in a lockdown. I mean, he just cooked this dude right here. But, uh, you know, he thought he couldn't do now. Hey, step back green. And, you know, he got a lot of moves for y'all, man. So y'all go over there and check it out. I don't think he gave y'all the cigs and stuff, but he said, you know, if you, if you put enough likes on the video, he gonna give you the cigs. And obviously, uh, a lot of people like the video because they need them. But, you know, like I said, man, basketball is a, is a game of deception. So just going left and right is not enough. You're supposed to fake one way, go the other way. And that's what he's doing right here. He's just he keeping this guy guessing. And then, you know, you see what I'm saying? You can still use him behind the back. He got him going one way, then he went to behind the back. It's, that's that's how you're supposed to use a move like the behind the back. Not, you know exactly where I'm going. I'm going to do the behind the back to get distance from you. It's, I got you going this way, so now I'm going to behind the back and go the other way. That's how basketball is supposed to be played. It's a game of deception. Uh, watch the Mamou Abdul Raouf documentary, and you'll see that. Uh, other, other than the fact that they blackballed him from the league and we supposed to ride for Colin Kaepernick, but he made a hundred million dollars as Camille Mamou ain't make near that. And they blackballed him and, and he didn't even do nothing. And it's not even a rule in the NBA that you gotta stand for the national anthem. He had been doing it for weeks. And then people was like, a, a, a damn reporter gonna bring their nosy ass up there. Hey, why are you not standing for the anthem? And you know, he said, that, that, you know, the flag ain't all things to all people, man. You know, it don't mean all things to all people, but you know, hey, it is what it is. It's his own silent protest. It what it is. That's a whole nother political thing, man. We gonna get into all of that stuff. But all I'm saying is, you know, uh, yeah. I'm out of here. Hope y'all guys enjoyed the video, man. That's all I have for y'all, man. Um, y'all let me know, what do you guys think about them taking away the behind the back? Have you adjusted, or do you think we're gonna be able to adjust? Is, is your goaded guard still getting buckets? A lot of guys in the comments said that they didn't even use that in their dribble style. They created their own dribble style that did not encompass that move. So they were just, they were just fine. And I, I, I tend to believe them because, like I said, T-Mizzle and them guys, they found out how to do it real quick, man. So, you know, it shouldn't be any excuse for anybody else because y'all say team is a laugh. Anyway, I got to get up out of here, man. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK of the People's Champ. Godspeed.